lighting people? The inside lighting audience includes lighting people such as lighting designers, engineers, architects, distributors, contractors, end users. And there's also a good portion of our audience who are manufacturers and their representatives who every day are trying to reach those lighting decision makers efficiently and effectively. So we thought it would be a good idea to catch up with a marketing strategist whose business, Venvio, helps building material manufacturers connect with decision makers. So we're pleased to welcome Beth Popnikoloff, CEO of Venvio. Beth, hello, and thank you for joining us today for Five Big Questions. Hey, Al, thanks so much for your time. I'm excited to be here. Hey, I'm really glad that uh, you're connecting with us. You're not a lighting person. You and your business are kind of in that architectural engineering construction realm. And I see you on LinkedIn. I hear your podcast. And um, I, I, I know that, that uh, you folks get involved with lots of things that touch building and building construction. So really love to hear your perspectives on how to reach customers. So when you look at some of your clients who are manufacturers trying to get in front of lighting decision makers or specifiers, are you seeing some common like low hanging fruit that some of those manufacturers aren't leveraging in order to have those strategies implemented? So we typically try to start at the basics of good marketing has, a, has an underlying principle, which is whoever gets closest to the customer wins. And what that means is it's about understanding who's your customer, what are their pain points, what are the solutions that you solve? And that really takes your marketing and sits it in between marketing and sales. So you're not, it's not just about who's got the best imagery, the flashiest, coolest tagline. Those things are important to get attention, but they're not necessarily going to convert. And what we also know is there's not a silver bullet. So it's not like, hey, just everybody be on Instagram and we're all going to make a bunch of money. It's about what you do when you're there is much more important than where you are. And that's why we talk about customer centric marketing or putting your customer in the spotlight and taking it off of these are our features, benefits, value propositions. And it's instead it's these are the problems that we solve that no one is talking about and using it importantly in the language that they would use. So it's not about you using your internal language or affluent or elevated language, but it's about speaking to the individual in a vocabulary and terminology that they would understand so that it resonates. It's immediately more memorable. It's immediately more repeatable. And all of those things lead to more impactful marketing. You know, Beth, I'm, I'm not a marketing expert like you, but I, I, I do know bad marketing when I see it. And you're right. There's, there's, a, lot, there, there's a lot of like that internal yeah. language, like you just yeah. mentioned. And also like during the pandemic, we realized like a lot of people just started doing their own thing and realized they, they couldn't reach people face to face. And we saw a lot of bad marketing there. So some of the things, not just the the, the, the feature benefits is, 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 is just basic stuff that's boring and, and all yeah. those other next level things are really important. So thank you for those insights. And when I, when I look at the lighting industry and as an observer, now and I see lighting manufacturers reaching out to to their clientele. I think they're pretty good at, at, at reaching those those lighting ar architectural lighting designers and ar and architects and engineers and even distributors. But sometimes contractors are tricky to reach because maybe there's a smaller percentage of contractors who are on Instagram or LinkedIn or other places uh, from a social media perspective. So what have you seen as best practices um, to reach the, the the contractor, the installer, decision maker? Something that's really important to know about contractors is they're one of the main people that will flip the spec. So getting in the spec, so if you have really high loyalty from an architect, it's really often the architect, or sorry, it's often the contractor who's going to be the most important person or the most key component to make sure that that spec actually gets put into fruition because there's not a GC or a builder in the world who's going to have to go out and get a new sub to come in and install the lighting if suddenly they get to a lighting manufacturer that they're not comfortable with or they have really strong loyalty and affinity to another. So it's even more key than just how do we do it, but why do we need to do it? It's a genuine business case, not just, you know, another channel for your marketing team to have to go after. So with that in mind, what we often see is for manufacturers of lighting specifically, they rely heavily on the reps to hold the reputation. And what that means is if you have a highly architectural rep, they may not be making the right reputation and the right, con the right connections and relationships with contractors. And it leaves the manufacturer kind of in the hands of the rep. So you might feel like you have really great market penetration because your architecture or rep is making really great connections, but if they leave or if another manufacturer starts going after contractors through marketing, you're suddenly at pretty significant risk. 
So we would say that lighting manufacturers need to not just lean into the reputation and relationships of reps, but really create their own marketing world and create their own gates and moat by having marketing that, again, is customer centric to the contractor, but also to the architect. We're not leaving them out. It's just a great end road because there's not a lot of them that are doing that. It's contractors kind of get tacked on at the end, or they you know, just make the assumption that they're going to install it because the architect tells them to. So by building relationships from the manufacturer side, not the rep side, you're likely to retain that loyalty a lot more strongly and have a significant more ROI because then you can trade reps in and out. It's not quite such a volatile market. Very insightful. Very good. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the challenges and some of those tips you mentioned and why to do it are, are very important. And um, one of the reasons why I discovered you a long time ago and, and invited you to be a part of today is because you're so good on social media. I really enjoy what you do on multiple platforms. And um, when you think about others who might be really involved in social media and maybe some manufacturers who are just trying to get better engaged on social media, what are what do you see from a building materials maker standpoint, what are some of the best practices out there and the best general approach? So best practice is to be personable. Social media is about social. And I know for manufacturers and in the B2B space that can, that I know for manufacturers and in the B2B space that can make us a little bit nervous because that means we are going to have to put a face to it. And the instant thing everybody thinks is what happens if that person leaves and the truth of the matter, don't tell your team is it doesn't matter. So if you want to put a face behind it and you want to be able to, so you want to make connection, like Al, you reached out to me because you saw my face and you saw me talking about marketing. That's a very different impact than if I just posted text and blogs and I'm a writer at heart. So if you know, if I'm saying it, you know, I mean it putting a face, like we are humans, we make connections. Everyone in our industry will tell you that we are a relational business and that's a hundred percent true. That's why it also needs to be part of your marketing. So it doesn't, almost doesn't matter what channel you're on. It does, and I'll tell you that in just one second. But the number one thing is you've got to have humans in it, making a human connection, because specifically for specifiers, I, they want to look at a person in the eye and know that you know what you're talking about. They want to talk to their local rep. They want to understand what are the other places where you've been installed. Every At that scale, every install is basically custom. So they want to know, hey, you're going to have my back. You're going to help me troubleshoot. You can handle this of my size. And if something happens from a lead time or a contractor suddenly gets cold feet about installing your product, then you're going to be on my side. All of those things are going to be things that you can bring into your social. If I had to choose one channel, it would hands down be YouTube. Hands down be YouTube. Why is that? So vid it's because video is the number one consumed content online. And if you are making the effort to create content on YouTube, it instantly becomes more scalable into every other channel. So you can create a three minute install video for YouTube that you can then turn into three one minute videos that you can put on Instagram. YouTube has the highest barrier to entry for manufacturers because video feels very overwhelming, but you and I are both sitting in offices right now. We do video all the time for our podcast and you don't have to have all of the super fancy equipment. We do have nice mics, but you don't have to have a nice mic to do an install video and to bring humans into it and be able to talk about it. It also instantly puts your products in a, in a space instead of just in a photo shoot. And so I would say it would be YouTube and then followed by Instagram. If you're going after architects, you have to be on Instagram and they do want that really beautiful beauty shot. They also want to hear people talking about it, especially hear architects and other specifiers talking about it. But those would be, those are my two main recommendations. You know, when I look on Instagram specifically and I see which accounts have, you know, the tens of thousands or more followers. Uh, a lot of it is what you mentioned. There's the, there's the, 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 the beautiful shots and, and video that, 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 that tells the architectural story, but then there's also the, the persona and it could be just kind of crude video too. It doesn't yeah. all have to be like perfectly like produced. Yeah. 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 yeah so, absolutely. Excellent. No, great insights. And, and, um, your company Venvio, you folks run, um, like a two day seminar, uh, that has in person and that has just great speakers, great program, great lineup, including the economist for the AIA, Kermit Baker, who we quote yeah. often on inside lighting. And so, um, so you have an all-star cast and, and given your connection with, with helping companies get connected with architects and other specifiers, what do you see from your perspective as the best approaches that building materials makers utilize to connect with the specifier? 
We were, first of all, really excited to be able to have Kermit join our workshop this year. And to answer your question, specifiers and engineers and architects, they rely heavily on reps, which I know sounds contradictory to what I said before about going after marketing. There's nothing wrong with relying on reps. The important qualifier there is they rely heavily on technical reps. They want their reps to know their products inside and out, not just the, I have a catalog of products that I sell, right? This isn't the door-to-door -door salesman rep. This is the, I live and breathe this category. I've been part of installs for hundreds of products. I'm the rep that's going to advocate when the contractor doesn't want to install my product, like I said, or if my, uh, your product's about to get value engineered out, but it's already been put into the spec. I'm the rep that's going to go in and either advocate for why it should stay or offer alternatives also from the same manufacturer. They're true, true partners and absolutely irreplaceable because architects have so much weight and liability for the entire built structure. There's no way they can be experts at every single point of the built environment. So being that expert for them and being that trusted advisor for them, not a, not a hawker, not a seller, but a true trusted advisor with skin in the game and best, like the best long-term vision for the product and for the architectural firm possible. That's how, that's how you win. Great insights. And you mentioned the, the representative and yes, in, in lighting, it's, it's a really important part in yeah. the commercial industrial, uh, you know, kind of channel. And, um, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't see a lot of representatives. And sometimes these companies are five to 10 people in smaller markets. Sometimes they're 50 or more in, in larger markets. Um, and they didn't have a marketing person. But today it's hard to find an, an agent, even the smaller ones, a re representative that doesn't have a marketing person. So yep. are you seeing that just in the greater scale too, that, that some of these marketing um, representatives are, are also having their own marketing approach for their rep rep uh, manufacturers that they represent? So to your point, it depends on the size. If they're, you yeah. know, if they're pretty small, there's not a lot of time for them to spend on marketing because if they're small, if there are five people in the rep firm, they're, they're, all of those people are out there pounding pavement and working really hard. The larger ones, typically, yes. Um, what we would usually say about that is that the rep itself should be your own marketing department. So you are, you're a consultant. Like if you're that true partner, you need to be selling yourself and marketing yourself like a consultant. So that means being super active on LinkedIn or the channels where you know your audience spends the most time and sharing those consultative insights because that's how you build that trust so that when you show up at a net new architectural firm or something like that, you're not necessarily a net new face. You just happen to be a net new rep. And you, that's a great way to steal market share or break in with a new firm that has long been loyal with one of your competitors is by building that trust outside of those lunch and learn meetings. Because we all have our guards down a little bit, right? Yeah. When we're on social media, it's not, you're not pitching directly to me. You're just sharing really good information. So now I get to know you. I get to trust you. So then when you come to talk to me about your products, I'm a lot more likely to listen to you. And, and might I say that the rep um, shouldn't be even, you know, I know you use the word pitching in a different context, but like, like we, we, we don't want to sound like we're selling, right? We're, we're, Great right? point. Because like, there's this one guy, JP. Hi, JP. A shout out to you who's in New York. And, and he's like 90 seconds into a video or even 20 seconds into a video. And he's talking to me in a way where it's, it's like relatable and, and just a conversation like, Hey, I recently visited this factory. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden at the end of it, I'm like, wow, he just really sold me on that great architectural downlight, but he did it in a storytelling way. And I learned something along the way. And I think yeah. that's, that's part of the, the secret sauce there is connecting in a way that's, that's relatable and personable without like, Hey, here's what we got for you today. hundred percent, hundred percent. Really good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So your, um, your podcast, tell, tell the audience what the name of your podcast is. Smarter Building Materials Marketing. Great. In one of your recent episodes, you were talking about creating a winning customer experience. And I loved a lot of the points that were made in that podcast. So um, if you're listening and watching this Inside Lighting audience, go subscribe and, and review uh, positively on, on your favorite podcast app. But um, tell us about that winning customer experience. And I know you can't reiterate the entire podcast here, but what are some of those main takeaways on how, to, how building material makers can provide a winning customer experience? So, I mean, I feel like I've repeated myself, but there's just some really good basics, right? So it's about being that trusted partner. It's about not selling. Nobody likes to be sold to. We are all in the for-profit business. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not a secret about why you're there. 
but it's about how are you there and what are you doing in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end that shows who you truly are and how you truly want to carry on this partnership. I think the number one thing that goes wrong with customer experience is trading short-term versus long-term. It's the, you know, it's the, hey, how you doing guy that you're talking about on social media, right? Nobody wants to buy from him. Nobody wants to watch him. I might watch your video one time. I'm never watching it again. And it's the same for sales and marketing. It's the same in that customer experience. You might be the only lighting manufacturer that can turn around lighting that I need, that's going to fit the aesthetic that my architect, that my architect designed in the time frame that I want. But if you're selling me, if you're the, if you're the used car salesman caricature, I'm getting, you're getting the short term versus the long term. So how can you be a trusted partner? How can you not gatekeep the information that I need? How can you not, don't make me hunt you down, like answer the phone, you be proactive towards me. I'm the customer, I'm the client. I want to feel like I've got someone on my side. I'm not just sitting here waiting, worrying, right? You are the one that's following up more than I'm following up about what's happening with my order or what's happening with my project. You're on my side. You're in my corner start to finish. And when it feels like a true relationship and partnership, that's how you create that exceptional experience, that, that experience of like, I've told the story, I've met you where you are, and now I can take it to many, many more projects. It's that old saying of, you know, people don't necessarily remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. If you make a customer feel valued, safe, trustworthy, then they're going to have, you're going to get repeat business versus transactional. Do you need it? Yes, we got it. Okay, let's all move on. That's not a winning solution. Great, great rundown of advice there. And that's, that's fantastic. And, and part of my background is, is I, I used to do sales training and, and even an adjunct instructor at a Philadelphia university for, for, uh, for sales course. And one of the things that we in, in lighting and I'm sure in other building materials, whether it's, it's ceilings or, or flooring or lighting is that there's so many different choices. You have a one product family, but there's a gajillion different ways that that could end up on the job. And I always felt that, that, um, to add, to add my two cents onto, onto your customer experience. Is, is specifiers they 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 don't necessarily want a million choices but they do want to be more confident in the choices that they make That's so having a, a message that communicates in this situation you use this in this situation you use that um, is also one of the things that we can do rather than just say hey you can have it 17 different ways you say here are the ways you could have it and here's guide them in the right direction so one um, of the best yeah. ways to sell is tell me where it doesn't work the more you tell yeah. me it works everywhere, the less I believe that it works for me. Tell me, so great. it's exactly what you're saying. I, yeah. We often see manufacturers are afraid to differentiate and say that use this product in this environment, this product in this environment, this product in this environment, because there's that fear of like, well, what if you wanted this one, but it, we say it doesn't fit there. There's that fear of like loss of that singular sale. But again, it's short term versus long term. If you tell me where it works and where it doesn't, I instantly believe you more about where it works. That's, that's excellent. And I, and in a lighting context, I'm thinking of one time I was on a sales call with someone and, 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 and they were selling, you know, an under canopy fixture for what, what you pump your gas. If you have a you know, canopy over a gas mm -hmm. pump in a gas station, um, someone was saying, can we use that in a, in a parking garage? And they say, you know what? You probably could, but but this is really better for a canopy, and here's why. But then yes. here's another alternative for a parking. So so you're yes. right. It's it's the the one thing that does everything can sometimes be less credible, or you're just confusing the specifier into well this this does a lot but doesn't do much. So yeah, that's perfect. That's great advice. Awesome. That I, I we could talk for another two hours, but um I'm grateful for the time that uh, that you spent with us today. So thank you for sharing your perspectives. And um, where can someone find you if they want to reach out for your company or you personally? Oh, absolutely. So uh, best place to hit me up is either on LinkedIn or Instagram. You can search for my name, Beth Popmukolov. I am the only one in the world, so I'm pretty easy to find. Or you can head to venvio.com to check us out and hit up our podcast, venvio.com slash podcast, and you'll be able to find all of our episodes there and subscribe as well. Beth, learned a lot. Thanks for joining us today for Five Big Questions. Thanks, Al. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me. And what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.